Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Romelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, and welcome to episode 9 of my Lightroom Photoshop and Photography Tips. Last week, we did a panel. We took these seven photos and we retouched it in Lightroom to get this result and then merged it in Photoshop CS6 and gave it a look. Here you can see the final result. Now this week we're going to do something special. It's a funny story. It's a bit the making of of my bestseller photo in galleries in Paris. I was walking in Montmartre one day and all I had on me was this little S90 Canon, a little, a good quality but a point and shoot camera. And I came across this incredible restaurant in Montmartre, the Lapin Gille. We can see the original photo there. And um, I kind of blew out the sky on purpose because I had this idea to make a historical dramatic scene of the place. And so I will show you how to get this result. That's the final result. I added a lot of drama. I added some half-tone sepia in the photo. And um, yeah, it's a very special photo for me. So I say, let's get started and let me show you how I created that effect. All right, so this is how I retouched that photo. Uh, first, a little backstory about this photo. This photo was taken with just a little Canon point and shoot camera, uh, the um, Canon S90. I was actually not, go I was walking in Paris and I was not intending to take photos, but I always had this little camera on me. And I saw this scene, which was quite amazing. This little restaurant in Montmartre, a very old historical part of Paris. And so I, I, I stood back and started taking photos and I was not wide enough to capture the whole photo. So I took four photos, like there was one photo here, another photo which was the top right, the top left, and the bottom left. And then I merged them and I got this result. So I was pretty happy with the result, but I wanted to, uh, I thought that this place was a, you know, pretty special, pretty historical, and I wanted to give it an old look. And um, this is how I did it. So that's the photo. Uh, the, the tutorial is not about merging. You can see last week episode about merging, how you do that. But it's about how to give uh, uh, an old look, a dramatic look on the photo. Now, as this photo was taken with a point and shoot camera, I lost all the details in the sky. You see, we can see that there is a bit of a sky, but I wanted a proper exposure for the restaurant itself. So I, on purpose, shoot everything a bit overexposed. So you see these lights are very bright and the sky is very bright. Now the reason I shot this uh, very overexposed and very bright was for doing a trick that I'm gonna show you now. I'm gonna take this sky, which is here, that's just a regular sky, uh, you know, that I took during the day with my DSLR. I'm gonna take the move tool and take this sky and move it over the photo. Now the, f the sky is gonna be small because behind it is a very high resolution file. Why? Because it was four photos merged into one. So if you look at the file size, the, it's 6,000 by 4,000 about. Uh, that's it's a big file because it was a panel. So the first thing we need to do is get the sky to be the size of the photo. So this I'm going to press Command T or Control T on the PC and just drag the corners. Doesn't matter if you keep the ratio of the photo or not. You just need to make sure that your sky is all over your photo. Then you press Enter. And that's going to just put the sky over your photo. Now. The trick is the following. If you put this into multiply, what's gonna happen is that everything which is white in a photo is gonna be transparent and the clouds are gonna appear behind it. Let me zoom out a little bit like this and I'm gonna press Command T again and I'm gonna move my sky, my clouds, until I make sure in the upper left part of the photo uh, I have darker clouds so they will be more visible. So that's I kind of like that. The whole idea was just to bring details, uh, to you know, to bring more information in the sky. Okay, once I've done this, I have some uh, spots here which are not very nice in the sky, so I can take care of that uh, using the stem tool, for example. So I can take the stem tool here and uh, make sure I am on current layer, uh, make my stem pretty big with holding Control and Alt or Control Option on Mac. And I'm just gonna clone stamp this. And uh, yeah, that's about it. It was just a little spot there. Now that doesn't look very good. 
And I want to give a little historical or sepia look to it, but not everywhere. And that's the big trick. So what I do is I add a layer. I'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer. So the whole photo now turns black and white. That's not what I want. So I'm going to click on tint and by default, Photoshop is going to give you a very sepia type of look. So that I kind of like, but it's way too much. So what I do is that I'm going to lower the opacity of that black and white sepia adjustment layer until some of the colors go through something like this, but it's still not enough. I want, I like the greens and the yellows here. So I'm going to click on the mask of the black and white and take a brush. I'm going to make sure my brush has an opacity of about 20 to 30%. So not a very, you know, uh, not a very strong uh, brush, you know, so it doesn't apply so much black, which is what I'm going to do because I'm going to paint on a white mask. When you have a white mask, anything which is on the layer is, go is coming through. If I paint black, it's going to, on the gradient, because I'm only doing at 20%, it's going to turn, turn down a little bit this sepia look. So I'm going to press X to get the black color as a foreground color. I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger. I right click to make sure my harness is at 0% and I'm just going to brush over the trees to get the green uh, back in the photo because I like the ideas of green and I'm doing this on the on the gradient. Okay, something like that. And I just want the greens back. Where are the greens? And the fact that I put that layer, you know, with the uh, uh, opacity of about 58%, the result is that it's just mixing up, you know, it's not all sepia. And uh, I like the idea of just getting some colors to go through, especially the greens here on the trees. Okay, once I've done that, I zoom in into the photo and I don't like the blues coming here. So I press B to get my brush back. I press X to go with white this time to bring back the sepia look. And I just want to make sure the walls are a bit sepia, you know, just here, here. The, the idea is to do a mix up between the sepia and the original color. And I think that what makes the power of that photo. And, you know, as I said, this photo is actually the, the photo I sold the most in galleries. So it was a big success for me. And I liked how it looked. So before, after, you see how the whole photo goes sepia, except the green parts of the photo. I like that effect. Now I want to give a bit more contrast to this photo. So I'm going to do two things to add contrast, actually three things. First, I'm going to add a hue and saturation layer that I'm going to put into soft light. This will give an tremendous contrast to the photo. So I'm going to back down the opacity uh, about yeah, 28% or something. And I'm going to bring up the lightness of that adjustment layer. You see before, after, maybe a bit more, bring it down to 50 before, after. It's just, I like the type of contrast that it does. And then on the top of that, I'm going to add, add a curve and this curve, I'm going to use the default setting of medium contrast. This is going to add a lot of contrast to the photo and it's going to make it very dark. So then I do another curve, but this time I'm going to brighten up everything. And now I'm going to take these two curves, I'm going to select them and I'm going to drag and drop them into a group, which I will call contrast. And I can check the before and after of both curve. Kind of like it, but it's a bit too much. So I'm going to back down the opacity of that. Okay. Once I've done that, two more steps to finish this photo. First, I'm going to do some dodge and burning. So I'm going to create a blank layer that I'm going to put into overlay mode. I'm going to take my brush, make sure I am in about yeah, about 10% of strands. Make sure that my foreground color is white. And I just want to bring a bit of light here, uh, you know, here on so that people can follow this pass with their eyes and maybe bring a bit of white here and the white here on that wall. Uh, maybe a bit of white here on, on, on the trees, you know, is here on the, uh, on the little uh, woods here, here. The whole idea is to make slight spots of light. Look at this before and after. Uh, on the opposite, I find that this is a bit too strong. So I'm going to press X 
to go with the black as the foreground color. I'm still at 10% of opacity. I'm just gonna paint a little bit over these bright areas. I think they, they, they attract too much attention. You know, the eyes goes to the brighter spot of the photo. So let's check it out before and after. It's very subtle, you know, but it just makes the whole photo a bit more interesting. And last but not least, um, I'm gonna add another curve because I, I, th I find that the overall photo is a bit too dark. I just wanna make this a bit brighter, something like that, yes. And now I'm gonna do a vignette effect and there's one way that I love to do the vignette effect and that is to create a layer that's gonna take into account all we've done so far. And for this, you need to have a very free hand because you need to press Command Alt Shift E on the Mac or Control Alt Shift E on the PC. And what that does is that it creates a layer taking into account all you've done so far. That layer I'm gonna put into a multiply mode. So again, the whole photo goes dark. Then I'm gonna take the rectangle marquee tool and create a rectangle about like this. The idea is uh, that I want this part of the photo to be dark and inside of this, I want this to be normal. But for this, I need to um, first feather my selection because if I press delete now, uh, it's not gonna be nice. You will see this is dark and this is normal. So Command Z to undo that. I'm gonna refine my selection a little bit because I think my rectangle is not exactly how I want it. So I'll go to select and I go into transform selection. I'm just gonna lower my selection here a little bit. Press enter. And now I go into select, modify, feather. And I'm gonna feather the hell out of that selection. I'm gonna feather it 500 pixels. So this is, now my selection is very smooth. It's very, it's not hard. So if I press delete now, you really get a vignette effect. Check this out. Before the vignette effect, after the vignette effect. It's cool, but it's a bit too strong. So I lower down the opacity a little bit until I like it. And voila, I'm done. That's before and after the vignette. Again, before, after the vignette. I love that photo. And that photo brought me a lot of success in galleries. And people always wonder what it is about this photo that's special. Well, what's special is it's got a good contrast and it has a sort of mixed up between the sepia and, you know, real colors. It's a complete artistic vision. Hope you like it. I show you the before and after. If I press the option key here on the bottom layer, you will see that's the before, which was already a nice photo. And that's the after, completely dramatic. So that's my trick of the week. Uh, before we finish off, I just want to show you again my website called photosearch.com. Uh, if you click on the App Store, you can come to my uh, boutique, my shop of training. I have many courses on Lightroom, Photoshop, Lightroom retouching, uh, doing compositing, uh, landscapes. Each course costs about $10 and you can even buy them cheaper if you buy them by two or three with special packages where you can get 20% discount, 15% discount. If you click here on the download training, you will get right away all the videos and the raw file used. And there's a lot of raw files that I'm giving for free. Uh, so you can follow along and create the same piece of art that I do. If you click here, you can buy, you can purchase the app on the App Store. It's going to be a bit cheaper, but then it's a bit harder. You have to follow a link to get the raw files and the video is not as good quality as if you click here on the download training. Okay, so you can support this podcast by purchasing my training. It gives me the opportunity to make more free tutorials. And also, I think you will learn a lot. I have really a lot of very nice, hundreds and hundreds of nice reviews on this training of people. They say that they learn more in two hours than in reading a whole book on Lightroom or Photoshop. So it's not me saying that, it's the people buying it. So I'm very proud of this training. My last training is a training called Understanding Photography with Simple Words. It's what it is. It's just basically a, a course about understanding photography uh, explained with only sp simple words. Of course, if you're a professional photographer, this course is not for you. It's really for somebody who wants to start and grasp all the basics. Last but not least, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to, the, to my channel so you can get this podcast for free every week. So let's head back to the studio. Thank you for following, guys. 
All right, guys, I hope you like that tutorial. It's a very special photo for me, as I told you. And as it is a special photo, this week's inspiration is a special photographer. His name is Eric Almas. He was originally from Norway and now lives in San Francisco. And he is my number one favorite photographer in the world. If I have to have a number one, he is the one. The way he masters Photoshop, the way he masters his composition is just crazy. I wish, I'm hoping that one day I will be as good as him and I'm working hard toward that. But this guy is crazy, crazy, crazy good. I get so much emotion from watching his photos and he really gets me going. So voila, thank you for following this episode with me and I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Wow, wow, wow.